Hi everyone, it's Mary from Joyful and Mary Quilting and today I am going to give you a free tutorial, everything included, measurements, directions, step-by-step walkthrough of the pattern as we create this adorable pillow. It's a 16 inch by 12 inch pillow. It is envelope style. We will be making the entire pillow cover. It's like making a mini quilt. When I show you the instructions on this, you can actually adapt my instructions to binding your own own quilt if you want. So let's get started. Let's make this really adorable pillow. It doesn't take any time at all. Today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable 12 and a half inch by 16 and a half inch pillow cover. It's actually removable as you can see because it's envelope style. You can take the pillow cover off. You can swap it out for another seasonal pattern or something that matches in the room that you're putting it in. It's totally up to you. I am going to walk you through the process of creating this pillow cover from assembly to quilting to binding and adding that back envelope style fabric to the pillow cover. So let's first start out with our supply list. We are going to need one 16 inch by 12 inch pillow form. Your general sewing supplies, which include your sewing machine, your iron, your pressing surface, your cutting mat. You will also need a coordinating thread that works with your project some pressing solution, the quilting and crafting spray or Mary Ellen's Best Press. I like both, these are my travel sizes. Either one will work. Of course, your rotary cutter with a good blade, a pair of scissors, a ruler. I like the two and a half by 12 and a half inch creative grids because it has that quarter inch seam marked on it. And this will work for, especially for the step when we talk about binding. I also use my six and a half inch by 24 and a half inch ruler. You will need a marking pencil. A regular pencil will work as long as you can see it on your binding fabric. That's where we're going to be marking it. You can use a disappearing ink. You can use water soluble. I like this one by Soline. It's a ceramic lead. It works well. I think it's a great pencil for marking that and being able to see my marks when I'm done on a variety of colors. I also used a Hera marker when I quilted. You don't have to buy one of these, but I'm going to just do a little demo on how to use it if you're interested. Or you can mark your quilting lines just with a one inch piece of painter's tape that you move as you are quilting. You also need some binding clips. These I use a lot in this project, so they're very inexpensive. You can get those on Amazon. And I also like the Magic Flathead Pins. These work really well for our binding. When it comes to fabric, you need a 16 and a half inch by 12 and a half inch rectangle. That can be pieced or that can be one solid piece, whatever you wanna do for that. You will need a piece of fusible batting. This is fusible on both sides. I like that, but you don't have to. If you don't have this, you can still use a piece of scrap batting and then just fuse it to the top and the backing with some 505 basting spray. You will need a piece of muslin that is 13 inches by 17 inches or even a little bit larger. That's gonna be the backing for your pillow top. And then for the envelope portion, the very back of the pillow, you'll need two rectangles that are 11 inches across by 12 and a half inches long. So 11 by 12 and a half, you'll need two of these. And you'll need two binding strips that are two and a half inches by your width of fabric. So we have our rectangle on the top. The next thing we need to cut, we have two more pieces because again, as I said, we're gonna make a mini quilt. And what's in a quilt? The quilt top, the batting, and the backing. Now, this batting that I'm using is actually a Pellon fusible fleece and it's double-sided fusible. So I'm gonna press them together. It's just gonna give me a nice feel to the quilt top. If you don't have that, if you don't have the double-sided fusible fleece, just use a scrap of batting. You can spray it with some 505 basting spray and fuse the top to the batting and then fuse this backing piece to the batting. The top again, as we said, is 16 and a half by 12 and a half. The backing fabric is going to be cut larger. I cut that 
13 inches by 17 inches or even a little bit larger if you want. That way when we fuse it together we have something to trim back. Everything will be trimmed nicely in the end. The batting however if you are using the fusible batting I cut that 12 and a quarter inches by 16 and a quarter inches. The reason being when you fuse this batting to the front and the back of your little mini quilt, your pillow top, if any of this is sticking out it's going to fuse to your iron and you're going to have a mess. It's better not to have the very edge of your top with any batting. You can't even see it. It's just it's going to all go under your seam allowance when it's only an eighth of an inch and we know we sew a quarter of an inch. It's going to go together perfectly but it will not then gum up your iron. So I'm really careful about that. We don't want to cut it way too small because if we do then it's not going to get caught in the seam. But an eighth of an inch on all sides if we've centered this on the batting works perfectly and that means that we cut everything a quarter of an inch smaller. Twelve and a quarter inches by 16 and a quarter inches when we are cutting our batting. And then again our backing is going to be cut larger. So once we have done this let's walk through the process of just creating the quilt top. The first thing we'll do is following the instructions on your fusible batting because you're going to be fusing these together. You want to make sure that you do it the way the manufacturer tells you to and there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different products so I'm not going to get into that. Just read your instructions. Once you have read those and you have fused these two pieces together as I have shown you here, we are going to trim them back quite yet. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to quilt the top. Now you don't need to clip it or anything because it's fused. Even if you've used the basting spray it's all fused together. But we want to make sure that we have a really nice smooth top. Now I'm going to give you a little mini lesson in quilting. Let's pretend if you want that this is a big quilt and I'm going to show you how you can actually use two different products that are going to help you quilt this without much trouble. The first thing with this since I want it to be simple, we're not doing anything elaborate, is we actually have some automatic quilting lines created for us here and that is the ditch. The ditch is where the seams come together on our quilt top. So one of the things that I'm going to definitely take advantage of is that ditch. Now since I'm using a red thread I don't want to quilt on the white with the red thread if I can help it. Sometimes we kind of veer off and it just happens. But I'm going to try and stay in the ditch where we have red thread and this one I'm going to just go right on the top of that red. That's one of the quilting lines that we're going to do. If you look on my stripe, oh there's all kinds of opportunities here to do some straight line quilting and all we do is we put it under our sewing machine. We have a walking foot which is really important that you have because what the walking foot does is it keeps these three layers together. What happens if you don't have it is they don't go evenly under your sewing machine and you can get bubbling, you can have a difficult time sending your fabric through. Get that walking foot. They're not that expensive, really worth it to have one especially with a project like this. So those are just some quilting options. This is the area right here that I'm thinking mm, what do I do to make it look fun? But I don't want to make it difficult. So what you can do is you can take some blue painters tape, this is one inch wide, and do whatever you want with it. Maybe you want to take it and lay it across from corner to corner and then you're going to sew right next to the painter's tape. So here and then it's already there so let's sew right here too. Once we've done that we're going to pick up that tape and it'll last. This is just a little project. It's going to last till the end. And then wherever that stitching line is we're going to place the tape down right next to the stitching line and we're going to stitch again. It will be a fun diagonal but it won't be anything that's actually uniform. You can do little lines, big lines, whatever you want but you just want to do something that's going to keep this sandwich together. Now what I love to use is my Hera marker and the Hera marker as you can see this baby has been used a lot. What you do with the Hera marker is basically you're just going to crease the fabric with this edge right here. I use my large ruler so this is my ruler and actually on the quilt and I'll show it to you again on the quilted top I know this is six inches wide so I know I can quilt every inch. So I am laying my one inch line right there and I'm going to take my hair marker and I'm just going to crease it. 
Now, don't count on that to be what you're going to use to eyeball the ruler as you move it. You're gonna count on this line right here. We know this is one, now we're gonna to go to two. So we're gonna move two right there and we're gonna do another crease. We finished two, now we're gonna move three. Place that right there, nice and even. And we're gonna do another crease. I just love this. You'll be so amazed when you do it to see what you can do. Now we're on four. Again, we're using this because it's so easy to see. These creases are not easy to see on the white. They're not really easy to see on anything uh, when we're marking it, but they are easy to see when we're sewing it. And then our final one is number five, and we're gonna go and put that crease in there. It's hard to see on the camera, but you can see that these lines are nice and creased, and this crease will not go away until you iron it out. Now, let's say you made a mistake. Let me just press it out and do it again. It's a little pressing spray and you're good to go. But I just love the way that this goes. Now, again, if you have trouble seeing this, just go ahead and use your painter's tape, or you can use an erasable marker or a disappearing ink marker or whatever you want to use on this that will go away eventually. Any of these things will work. So that's how we quilt it. I'm gonna show you now on the finished top that I did. Here is the quilted top after I have sewn on all of those lines that I marked and I have trimmed it all back to our 12 and a half inches by 16 and a half inches. So our backing has now been trimmed off and this is what we're going to use for our quilt top. And look at how nice that is. I mean, it just makes for, it's not a sloppy feel to it. If you wanna put a quilt block in here and quilt that, you can do whatever you want. There are so many possibilities when it comes to making a pillow top it's just, as I said, like making a mini quilt. Now that we have this done, we have our mini quilt already assembled. The only thing that it's missing is it's not bound. And for the pillow, we need the backing fabric. We need that envelope that goes together with the pillow so that we can get it in and out and make it into a pillow. So it's not really a quilt. Here's the mini quilt. We're gonna turn it into a pillow by adding those 11 inch by 12 and a half inch rectangles to create that envelope. Now you might wanna pause or take a screenshot of this formula. Now, you don't have to do a whole lot of measuring when it comes to this anymore. All we're gonna do is we just want everything to line up right. So I have taken those two 11 inch by 12 and a half inch rectangles. If you look, it's 11 inches horizontally and 12 and a half inches vertically because this is our vertical side. So what we wanna do is we wanna hem this piece right here so that we don't have a raw edge showing on our pillow. This is the tricky part because don't hem the wrong side. You wanna hem the longer side. You hem the side that's going to actually lap over creating that envelope. So on ours, this is the 12 and a half inch side. So we have 12 and a half inch here, 12 and a half inch here are 11 inches across the top. When you press this, and I've already got it pressed so that you can see what I've done, but you'll start out this way. You're gonna fold it a quarter of an inch, but you know, as best as you can, just eyeball it. You don't have to do any big measuring. You don't want a huge piece, but you don't want it too small. So just eyeball a quarter of an inch, press that, Fold it over again and press it one more time. I use pressing solution to hold it down and then you are going to sew a little seam right along the edge of this fold or this hem. And then we're gonna do the same thing to this side. I have sewn that hem along the edge to make sure that everything is secure and tight. So then we are going to overlap these two pieces to get that envelope. So how far do we do it? Take that quilt top, your little mini quilt that you've already made, and we are going to turn it wrong side up. Then we're going to place these two rectangles and cover that top and then I like to clip it. Now I wanna make sure that I clip this spot right here that's hidden underneath, because I don't want that flap to come out. So I've got that clipped, I clip here, I clip here, 
and then just put a few more in. You want to make sure that you clip it, even though this is a small piece, you want to make sure that you clip it because it still can kind of get off kilter. It can still get a little bit crooked. You can have, you know, the edge can move a tiny bit as you're sewing and then your pillow's not going to be straight. And if it gets off far enough, your pillow form won't fit in. So you want to make sure that you don't let that happen. The more you pin, the more you clip, however you decide to do it, you just take the clips out as you're sewing. So now we've got this all ready to go. We need to sew an eighth or less of an inch all the way around the edge. We have two binding strips that need to be connected. I'm going to just go through a quick way to do an angle seam to connect your binding strips. The first thing you want to make sure you do is cut off those selvage edges. Then we'll just pretend this is full length, but it's just easier for me to show you in the demo with short strips. The next thing we need to do is we need to add this strip to this strip with an angled seam. It's a real simple process. Leave this strip horizontal. This strip is going to go vertical, right sides together. And what you want to do is match this edge, the short edge, with the long edge. And then I leave a tiny bit hanging out just so that I can see where I need to mark it. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to place it from this point to this point and I'm going to mark a line, a diagonal line on that point. So there's my line. I'm going to pin this across that diagonal line. And then you are going to sew from here to here. This part is going to be cut off as we trim a quarter inch seam. So first go ahead and sew from here to here. Now I've used red and it's totally covered up my pink line. So I know that I did it right. I'm accurate. So now I'm going to place that quarter inch marking on my ruler right on the line that I have sewn. And then I'm going to trim it off. And there I have my perfect quarter inch seam. This little tail doesn't matter. We'll trim that off in a second. Then you can see, check it first. Make sure it's right, which it is. We are then going to just press open this seam right here. You'll press that open and we are good. And you'll hook the two pieces together so that now you will have enough to go all the way around the edge plus some extra. So let's talk about how we are going to add that binding to the quilt top. As you can see, this is just binding that I put around the edge. And once I've done the binding, the pillow cover is done. Okay, so now we are ready to add our binding on. I am going to be sewing this on by machine. There are two different ways to do it. When you sew it on by hand, you add it a little differently, but I'm going to show you the machine binding in this particular technique. We want to, since we are going to sew it on by machine, we're going to turn our top over to the back side. If this was your quilt, this would be the backing. Then we are going to position our binding strip with the raw edges, those edges that are folded together, alongside the raw edges of our quilt top or of our pillow top. Now we want to make sure that we have enough space to get the binding all worked out. So we're going to do a little bit of measuring here. First of all, you want to take and place a pin at your stopping point. And you'll understand that in a minute. And I'd say maybe, I don't know, three to four inches down from the top. If this was a big quilt, I would go 10 inches down. But since this is small, I'm only going to go four. Then we need to leave three inches open so that we can actually begin our binding strip. So one, two, three, and I'm going to put another pin right there. That's not where we start sewing. That's where we start our binding strip. Again, raw edges on the outside aligned with the raw edges. And I'm going to place this right here on the top and I'm going to replace the pin just so that I can hold this in place. So we're starting there. Where do we start to sew? 
we start to sew six inches from the edge of that binding strip. So once again, we need one more pin. We're going to measure six inches down from the top of that binding strip, and that is right here. And we're going to put a pin in it. This is not going to be sewn yet. We're starting right there and we're going to sew down the side. Okay, now this is a critical part when you are sewing because you want to make sure you get a nice mitered corner as you turn the corners. I'm going to use my marking pencil and I'm going to use my ruler in order to mark this binding strip where we stop and what we do once we've stopped. I'm going to lay the quarter inch marking of my ruler right along the edge. You want to make sure that this is all lined up here. You can't really see what's under here, but since it's lined up, chances are real good you're okay. And then I'm going to draw a horizontal line, just like that. You can see my horizontal line. I'm going to place the quarter inch marking of my ruler right along the edge of the pillow cover and I'm going to do another line so that I have a crisscross right there. That is a quarter inch from this edge and a quarter inch from this edge. And then I'm going to take a little, one of my little pins, I'm going to poke it right in the center and secure that. You sew your quarter inch starting here all the way to the pivot point, needle down, turn so it's on a perfect diagonal and sew off the edge cut your thread. So do that. Now we're going to turn the corner. We've sewn off the edge, we've sewn down, we've sewn off the edge. The way that we need to line this up to get that perfectly mitered binding corner is this raw edge needs to line up with this raw edge. How do we do that? You're going to have a little fold in here. That's the miter. So we'll take this, do it right along with me, put your finger underneath to pull that up as you're turning the strip and lining it up right along this edge. Now you want to make sure that these two folds, you don't want them like this, you don't want them like that, you want them to line up exactly along the fold and then you want to make sure that this edge, this fold right here, is lined up along this edge. I'm in a little bit of an awkward position so I'm hoping that it's right. I can't see it real close but we want to make sure that we've got that edge lined up with the pillow top. We want to make sure the binding is lined up with itself, its fold, and we want to make sure those raw edges are lined up. Then I like to take a little clip and put it right in there just to hold that in place. We are going to take this and I put clips all the way along the edge just to make sure that I have everything lined up. It can get off as you're sewing. The binding strip can move. It's a little strip and you want to keep them lined up as best. You can use pins here too. You don't have to use clips. Whatever works for you. Then you're going to sew. Just start right up here at the top and you're going to sew a quarter inch all the way down, all the way down, all the way down to this point and pivot again. So this is where we have to make sure that we have everything lined up. We want to keep that lined up those raw edges, remember this is the raw edges, with the pillow. We want to line that up and then we want to make sure that we mark our pivot point. So just like we did the first time, we're going to take that quarter inch marking on our ruler and we're going to line that up with the raw edge of our pillow and go right across the binding strip. So you want to make sure that that raw edge is lined up and it goes right off the edge. If this is lined up, you're good. It'll be lined up all the way. And then I'm going to make that horizontal line. I'm going to turn my ruler, keep everything in position, place my quarter inch line right on that raw edge, and I'm going to make another point there. Now sometimes we get brave and we think, oh, I can see it. I can figure it out. I don't even need to mark those points anymore. And you know what? Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't need to mark them, but I find that I can get off and when I do, my corners don't look good. So I like to mark them. I'll put my pin right in that pivot point. You're going to sew all the way down, starting at the very beginning. You're going to sew that quarter inch all the way down to the pivot point. Drop your needle right in that hole as you remove your pin. 
I'm gonna sew from there to there, right off the edge, cut my thread. You're gonna do that for every corner. So you're gonna do down this edge, again, repeat the process for the horizontal, mark your points for the vertical, and you're gonna sew all the way until you get to this pin. This is your stopping pin. Stop when you get there. And this is where I like to use a pin that's a little different from all my other pins or clips or whatever, because it reminds me that I'm stopping here. Leave this pin in, but when you get to this one, just do a little back stitch and take your pin out. So go ahead and sew that entire strip. You're gonna sew it all the way around, turning the corners. Just rewind to see how to do those corners. It's very simple, but it's exactly the same. When you do your fourth corner, then you are going to do that final flip, making that miter at this corner and then only sew right to there. So go ahead and do that. So now we have sewn all the way around. You can see I've got all my mitered corners ready to go. I have sewn to my stopping point right here, remove my pin. And if you look under here, this is my starting point. This is where the binding started. I didn't start sewing until down here, but this is where my binding started. And we need to connect this end to this end, and we need to connect it smoothly so that it doesn't have a tuck or a ripple in it. The way we do that, we're gonna take this pin out, but we still wanna make sure, this is, there's a lot of fabric here. So we wanna make sure that this is always smooth and tight. We don't want this to get kind of wrinkled up. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind as you're doing this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little piece and we're gonna pull it out just beyond the edge so that when I lay this down and match those edges, it shows. We want that little point right there to show. That's gonna be where we place our ruler. And this is where the two and a half inch ruler is so important. Because we've used two and a half inch binding, if you used a two and a quarter inch binding or less, then you will change this amount that I'm gonna show you right now to whatever the width is of your binding. My binding is two and a half, so I'm gonna use two and a half inch width. I'm gonna turn my ruler, I know my ruler is two and a half inches, and I'm going to line up the edge of my ruler with that little piece that's sticking out right there. Make sure that everything is laying flat. This is lined up, I can line this up, I just wanna make sure everything is straight. I'm going to take my marking pencil and I'm gonna mark a line right across that bottom edge right there. This is going to be our matchup line. So now this is where it's a little difficult for you to see. I hope it's not too bad, but everything is in tight quarters here. And it's gonna be in tight quarters over here, whether you're doing a big quilt or a little quilt. We're talking about a small amount of space here. The best way to make that space not quite so tight is to take our quilt or our pillow and just do this. Fold it up a little bit and we're gonna stick a pin in it to hold it there just for now. We, want, we just want a little extra space here. So I've just folded that up a little bit just to keep it so that I've got a little extra space to work with. We're working with the binding right now. We've already got it marked, so it doesn't matter what we do with that edge. This is our line. We're gonna open up the binding strip. So we've got the wrong side on the bottom, the right side, which has the marking on the top. Place it over here so that we've got a flat edge under it. So this is where you don't wanna get this mixed up. You wanna make sure that you have this exactly the way I'm showing you. So you've got it here. We've already opened this one up. We're gonna open it up so the wrong side is showing and then we're gonna turn it this direction, line up this edge and the edge of our strip is gonna be lined up with that mark. So I know it looks a little confusing here and it's a little tight quarters, but this is gonna give you that perfect edge. So we've got it here and I'm gonna put some pins in it so that I can mark it without worrying that it's gonna get out of control. I want the pins to go in the same direction that I'm gonna mark and just watch and do it exactly like I'm doing. We are gonna mark from corner 
to corner. And my flathead pins are nice because I can actually place my ruler on the top pretty much and draw that line without it being too big of a bump. So there I've got my line drawn and I'm going to take my pins and put them this way across the seam. I just find it holds it in place a little bit better. So remember, we've got this bottom edge lined up with that mark line. Don't line up the top edge, it's not going to be right. So we are going to now sew on that marked line from here to here. So go ahead and do that. So I have sewn on that line directly from point to point. Don't cut anything yet. Don't cut this off because if you made a mistake, it's a real problem to try and add to this piece once it's been cut off. We just want to double check it first before we do any cutting. So I'm going to remove my pin and let that come back out again. And then I'm going to look to see that everything is lined up right. And look at that. It lines, it's got, it's bulky under there, we can see. But what we'll do then is we'll trim our quarter inch seam and we'll finish sewing that seam all the way down the edge. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to lay that flat, place the quarter inch marking of my ruler right on that sewn seam line, and then I'm going to trim that big piece. And there wasn't that much left over, so it's not too bad. Then we will go ahead and press, as we did the others, we'll press that seam open just because there's less bulk when we do that. So we're going to press that open, then take it to your ironing board and do that. Once you've done it, you're going to lay that. Look at how nice that lays on there. And this is so perfect when we are looking at our pillow top. For some reason, those diagonal seams just seem to disappear. And they are even and they look good. Now pin it quite a bit. You want to make sure that when you sew this, that you've got some pins in there that are going to hold it in place so that you've got everything lined up right. You wanna just sew right along that edge, make sure that you still have your walking foot on your machine, and then come back and I'll show you how to finish it up. And look at that, isn't that great? It is just perfect and it's ready to be folded around to the front of your pillow top to finish that binding. So what we're gonna do is, I like to start in the middle just because that way I can do both of my mitered corners. The way that you do it, you just put your finger in there and just, it's, it's so satisfying. You just flip that over and then when we get to the corner, I'll show you what to do. Since we are machine binding this, this is why we're folding it to the front. Because that way, once it's clipped all around the edge, we are going to sew a seam right along the edge of this binding so that it is perfect on the front side. But we just want to make sure that we sew close to the edge and I find that the clips just work really well. So you're going to go around, I like to clip the whole thing. You want to make sure your binding looks even as you go around the edge. And the mitered corners, once again, just flip that over so that this is right side out. And then leave the corner alone for now. And we're gonna clip on these sides as well. But what we want is we want, this naturally just makes that mitered corner. When I flip that, look at that, you saw how I did it. It just naturally turns miter, but the front doesn't. So what we wanna do is we're gonna take our finger and push it all the way down to the corner. And I know this is not easy to see, but once we've gotten that, you're just gonna have to just kind of move it around until these two points match. They come together super easy. I mean, it's, it's not a problem. And then I put a clip in it right there to hold it in place. Then I put a clip here, and even though they're close, I put it in every single spot, just like that. When I am sewing along this edge, I'm gonna sew right here all the way down. When I get right to this point where those intersections are, I'm gonna pivot and I'm gonna go this way. And it will hold, it'll look great. 
Now on the back, once again, you know, hopefully it'll look good on the back, but if you've got matching thread, it's not going to make a bit of difference. So we're going to go around the edge. Let's do that again. I'm pushing my finger. Be careful that you don't do this. You want your border to look even, your binding to look even, because it's kind of a little border on your quilt. So we want it to look good. So let's just make sure as we're doing that, we're pushing this all the way to the end to make that natural miter. See it? And there it's mitered. We're going to put that clip right there. We're going to put the clip here to hold that. And if it's not held in place, if it's not exactly perfect, just adjust it. You know, that's all you have to do is just move it around a little bit. I'm going to put one here. This one can go down a little bit because that's a little close. And then we are going to finish going around the edge just like I showed you. I just wanted to get those two points in there to make sure that you see how easy it is to miter those corners. And here's our last corner. Push it with my finger. Line up that point. You can see how easy it is. It takes a little practice, yes, but just practice. This is a great way to practice your binding. And then when you do it on a big quilt, it's not gonna be a problem at all. Here we go. We have our Pillow top ready to sew. Again, as I said, sew right close to that edge all the way around. Try and keep it straight. And then there we have our finished pillow cover. We have a beautiful binding on it. We have mitered corners that look great. We just pop our pillow inside of it and kind of smoosh it around a little bit to make sure that you've got all the edges filled so that it looks nice and even and you are good to go.